the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friend, I'm sure you're well. On the 26th day of March, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2022, Saturday. Today we are on the 20th day in our 25 days novena for candidates and the school-going children. Tomorrow we are on day 21st. So we are coming to the end. And now we can say that uh, we, are, we have less than seven days. Because on Friday, we conclude the novena. I am already so excited that we are getting ready slowly by slowly to get there. Today, I want us to reflect on something that we mentioned on Sunday. If you remember Sunday, Sunday we talked about the experience of the burning bush. And I just want to pick on something about the burning bush, not the whole concept, but only one aspect of the burning bush experience. And this is the removing of the shoes. Now, I want to give you a very short reflection on removing shoes. So, for example, we first ask this question. Why do we buy shoes generally? Why do you go to the shoe store and you buy one? Why do you buy shoes? We buy shoes for many social reasons. Number one, we buy shoes for convenience. We just want to walk. I mean, we, we, are better, uh, we are better comfortable, we are more comfortable in our shoes than without, for obvious reasons. We also buy shoes to mark important dates like weddings, burials, and graduations. I'm sure you have got the shoe that you bought on your graduation. Those of you who have graduated, I know there is a shoe that reminds you of a certain date. Maybe it was Rashio, it was your wedding, it was your rite of passage, it may have been your wedding, it may have been whatever it was. Maybe you were burying your mom, you were burying your dad. Uh, you were doing something, but you, are, you had an event. So that pair of shoe reminds you of that event. So we also buy shoes for that reason. Number three, we... Also buy shoes. Those of us who travel, there are people who buy shoes for the cities they have traveled. So that shoe, it's like a memorial of a certain city I, I traveled. Uh, my producer is looking at me with some funny and bad eyes. Because I once said, which is so true, <laughs> I once said that uh, I try as for the CK. I try to buy a shoe in every city I visit in the world. So some of my shoes are a reminder of a certain city that I visited. So there are those of us uh, who buy shoes as a memorial of a certain or a reminder of a certain place I visited. Uh, it may not be an international uh, place. It may be a national place. It may be a parochial place, uh, maybe in the, with the same county, this I bought in this place, this I bought in this place. There are those others, again, on the same. Uh, I visited this place, and this community lives here. This is how the community dresses. So they buy a certain shoe, maybe from a certain nomadic tribe, maybe from uh, the Arameans of another place, all those things. Number four... We buy shoes because it is mandatory in honor of a certain institution, the dress code of that institution. Like the military, there is a special shoes for the military. There is a special shoe for those who do marathon, you know. There is a special shoe for our boys and girls in high school, you know. Those are the shoes that are determined by a certain institution and it becomes part of the dress code of that institution. We also buy shoes to keep up with the fashion. There are people who buy shoes for fashion. In fact, I was reading uh, among, the, among the, the people who have got huge numbers of pairs of shoes. And they are there. They are celebrities who buy shoes because you know, it goes with their status, 
sometimes because they just want to go with the, with the, with the fashion, other things. There's a guy called DJ Khalid. DJ Khalid has, uh, according to the latest statistics, the guy has 10,000 pairs of shoes. 10,000. If you didn't know, now you know. There are even those who have insured their own shoes. Finally, um, the, 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 we, we also sometimes buy shoes to set us apart from the other class. Simply because maybe they are just extremely expensive. There are some stores that you enter, you don't enter because, uh, just because. It is a store of some class. I always give an example. One day I traveled to Paris in France. And I visited a certain, a certain uh, store where uh, shoes for some categories of people are sold. So you don't just enter there if you are not well liquid. Because they, they, they have shoes that goes up to a million Kenyan, Kenyan money. And uh, they, I know they are shoes that are so expensive, even, even more than a million in this country. Not in this country, in this world. Uh, in the various cities I have visited in this world. So there are people who buy shoes because it's from a certain store. It's not everybody who goes there. So there are those who buy because we want to be in a certain class. Now, that is as it is. So, what we need now to, to ask is, eh, in our burning, shoe ex, uh, burning bush experience, there is the removal of shoes. I have shared with you why we buy shoes socially. But shoes have meaning in the Bible. So that is the meaning of shoes in our social setting. What is the meaning of shoes in the Bible? Number one, shoes in the Bible symbolize our direction and life path. Our direction and life path. Wherever shoes are mentioned in the Bible, the direction of life is in place. And the path of life that we have taken. Think of the prodigal son. In the case of Moses, something is changing. God is about to take authority. Number two, shoes symbolize our faith and readiness to be of service to God. Shoes symbolize our faith and readiness to be of service to God. I remember in one of my visits in one of the countries in the world, I participated in the professions, first profession of our religious nuns. In, that, in their congregation, when the young girls are being promoted from novice to the temporary professed. There is the, the after the homily, there is a, a, a part where they go out to dress up. And then they are given some ceremonial shoes to show that they are now ready for service. So now you can, you know, connect those things and understand why there is shoes in the burning bush experience. Because Moses is communicating something. The shoes in the burning bush is communicating something about Moses. Number three, shoes in the Bible symbolize the protection we receive from God and the desires granted to us by the universe. The protection we receive from God. The father in the prodigal son story represents God. If you have noted, the father directed that the prodigal son is given three things in this order. A robe, a ring, and the shoes. I think so, yeah. The robe is number one. The ring because of the connection and the, fam the family ties and the shoes. That from now on, you are under the protection of God the Father. Number four, shoes in the Bible could also be a message from God that we have wandered off from the right path in life. Aha, uh -huh. that tells us maybe that is why in the burning bush experience, Moses is 
removing his shoes. Aha. Uh -huh. It could mean that he could have wandered off from the right path in life. It also means the prodigal son had no shoes because he had wandered. So he, he must be given shoes for direction, readiness for the mission and the ministry. Don't I love that? So, what then does it mean to remove the shoes? Maybe we can look about that on Monday. We can check that on Monday. But you can stop it at that. We have looked at what the shoes stand for in our social life, what they stand for in the Bible. Maybe if I get time, I'll be able to take you through um, what it means to dream with the shoes. Maybe very fast. I would, if you dream, if, you, if in your dream you were wearing somebody's shoes, if in your dream you were, you were borrowing shoes, if in the dream um, you were wearing torn shoes, if in the dream you were wearing shoes bigger than your size, that is not a good dream. <laughs> that is not a good dream. Anyway, I'll take you through the dreams and the shoes. It is a whole world of topic. <laughs> ha! Tomorrow it is Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent. And tomorrow we will be reflecting on the prodigal son. Maybe God willing, next week I'll mention something about the prodigal son and maybe the, the extended lesson that we may not pick on Sunday. At 8 a.m. East African time, we will be able to join one another for Holy Mass, led by our main celebrant, Leverett Father C.K. Here he is. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Saturday, and buy your shoes, and you buy me a pair. <laughs>